So welcome to another episode of Pork Tactical. Today I'm going to be going through this uh, Brigade BM9 build that I did. A um, bit of a mutant uh, custom build. And uh, what I'm going to do is go through uh, from front to back and talk about why I made the decisions that I made with regards to parts um, and just my experience in taking the stock uh, parts, the brigade, and uh, converting it into something that uh, works really well and that I enjoy using. <laughs> Okay, so let's start at the front and let's start with the can first. This is the Obsidian 45. Um, the quest first question would be probably why did I go with the Obsidian 45 instead of the uh, Obsidian 9? Um, well, basically I have plans to build a direct impingement uh, 10 millimeter that uh, Macon Armory uh, makes and they make the upper. So anyway, point is, I wanted something that could perform well on the nine millimeter, but also something that I could use on, you know, if I decided to uh, do a 45 or a 10 millimeter build. So uh, that was the reasoning behind that. It performs slightly less good than the Obsidian nine on nine millimeter rounds, but uh, it's, it's slight. And in my opinion, you know, being able to have that flexibility uh, is pretty cool. So the, uh, the weight, of, of this can is 12.8 ounces. Um, the, you can, this is configurable. So what you can do is you can basically unscrew this, take it apart and compress it into uh, a smaller can. It gets um, in, in the smaller size. Uh, so this is 8.6 inches the way that it is. You can compress it down to 6.7 inches. And when you do uh, make it shorter, uh, it also decreases the weight down to 10.7 ounces. So that's kind of cool. Honestly, I've never ran this in the shorter configuration. I've always just had it in the longer configuration. Um, but, you know, if that's something that matters to you, uh, well, know that you do have that option with these. Okay, now moving on to the muzzle device. Uh, this is the Angstat Arms muzzle brake. Uh, this is a tri-lug muzzle brake, and so this uh, utilizes the same quick detach system that the uh, Obsidian 45 uses. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, finding something like this was not easy. Um, there's not a lot of places that make them. Uh, there are a lot of like tri-lug uh, uh, mounts or, or adapters rather for the barrel that would allow you to then screw on a, an additional muzzle brake or flash hider or something like this. Uh, but I didn't want to have to, you know, take this off and then put that part on. I just wanted to quickly take this off and then already have the muzzle device built in. So um, this has worked out pretty well. Okay, so moving on to the barrel. This is a five and a half inch um, Macon Armory guarantee to feed barrel. Uh, I talked about uh, this system in my last video, uh, but this is made by a guy named Rudy down in Georgia. And these barrels specifically have a very extended and exaggerated feed cone that help feed um, uh, you know, ammunition that's not round nosed. So Rudy does a great job. He's one of the pioneers in the space. And uh, I just bought this barrel directly from him uh, you can take your existing barrel and ship it to him, and he will, uh, you know, uh, machine it in a way that turns it into a guaranteed feed barrel. Um, but uh, I just bought the barrel from him. So uh, I went five and a half inches because I knew I was going to suppress it. And, you know, with a, a, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this suppressor is eight, uh, 8.6 inches long. So I knew that, you know, I wanted then to have a barrel that was shorter to accommodate the suppressor so that when I added the suppressor, things didn't get, uh, you know, too long, too unwieldy, I guess. Uh, this barrel specifically has a one, uh, one tenth twist rate and it's got a black, black nitride coating. Uh, it is uh, threaded one half by 28 and, um, 
The one, the one thing that I will say about these barrels uh, that, that you should know about this, I guess, uh, for me, was a little interesting is that it didn't have an index pin. And that throws people off sometimes because, you know, if they're used to AR-15s or other things, you would expect to have an index pin. But because there's no feed ramp, because it is a feed cone that's in here, uh, it, it doesn't really matter where the barrel sits. So you won't find an index pin on this barrel. Uh, just know that coming into it, that there's nothing wrong with it. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's just because there isn't any particular way that the barrel needs to sit inside of the receiver in order to feed properly. So moving on to the handguard, uh, this is the Brigand Arms Hoplite Edge Low Profile Handguard. And uh, this, uh, this thing is four and a half inches long. So to um, uh, accommodate the five and a half inch barrel here, you always want to go, I, I mean, some people say like 0.75 inches uh, difference between the handguard and the barrel. I usually go one inch difference uh, just, just to be safe. And as you can see here, uh, this is the difference between the handguard being 4.5. You can see that the barrel basically uh, comes out to right here at five and a half. So remember that you're there, you know, part of your barrel is going to sit inside here in the receiver. So you, you know, always want a barrel that's, uh, you know, I think one inch longer than the handguard. This handguard specifically, it's carbon fiber. There is essentially no heat transfer. Now, I know that that is not really an issue on nine millimeter, uh, but as you get into, you know, rifle calibers, uh, heat does become an issue. This one in particular uh, at four and a half inches long is only 2.75 ounces in weight. So I was really, uh, again, knowing that I was going to put a suppressor on this, I was trying to minimize the weight at the front of the gun as much as possible so that it's, it's balanced out altogether from front to back. And I, I feel like I accomplished that uh, with this handguard. The people at uh, Brigham Arms were, you know, really great to deal with. I called, asked a bunch of questions, and, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the purchase. It, it wasn't cheap, and I will say that the one thing that I don't like about it is that it is slippery. Uh, just due to the nature of carbon fiber, it, it's slick. And the problem is, is because there aren't any M-locks here, and, and this is the area that I would grip uh, the, the handguard in, I can't put any like rail scales or anything like that. So I guess I could put some sort of wrap or, or something to, you know, in, increase the grip, but um, it, it does get a little slippery here, which uh, is, you know, kind of why I put the hand stop there. You know, initially when I did this build, I was still waiting for the suppressor. Um, so I was just shooting it as is, hence the hand stop. Uh, now that I have the suppressor and, and this is, you know, pretty much always on the gun when I'm shooting it, I don't necessarily need the hand stop, but, you know, I'll, I'll keep it there anyway. Moving on to the receivers, the, the receivers are stock. So these are the um, Brigade VM9 upper and lower receivers. Um, you know, nothing really has changed with the exception of putting in an ambidextrous uh, safety selector here. Um, other than that, it's the, you know, the, these are the parts uh, that came with the gun originally. Inside here, I've got the uh, make an armory uh, bolt. So they call this a ramped bolt. I didn't actually know what that was, uh, so I had to look it up. And apparently ramping of the bolt reduces the impact shock of the bolt on the hammer. And, uh, and apparently it also reduces the wear and the shock um, on the hammer trigger pins. So I learned something new. Uh, I had no idea. Uh, the reason that I got the, uh, the, the bolt is because when I was going through the process of trying to get the gun to work properly, uh, I was going to buy the barrel and the buffer uh, from Make an Armory anyway. And I figured, well, if I'm going through the process of trying to get this thing to function properly, let me just get the, uh, you know, a, a set of the parts that matter with regards to having the gun function properly. 
all as a set. I probably didn't need the bolt, um, and as some uh, Redditors have pointed out, probably unnecessary because the, the existing bolt on the Brigade BM9 is already uh, cut uh, properly. So, um, yeah, anyway, so less, lesson learned on that. But I, I bought it as a set. Uh, they, they sell them as a set. Um, like I mentioned, uh, this is uh, stock, the low receiver here. This, uh, you know, I honestly forgot what brand um, this ambidextrous switch is. The one problem, though, that I did have actually in putting in a, a new safety selector is the Cerakote was on here pretty thick. And so what I had to do was grind down the Cerakote and sort of open up the, the hole more because this switch initially, when I put it in, was almost impossible to actuate. Like I, I could barely, it, it actually took a lot of effort um, to, to flip it. And so, you know, uh, initially I thought that, you know, something was wrong with the switch. Um, and then, you know, uh, a friend of mine pointed out that, no, it's because of the, the, the Cerakoting. And once we kind of grinded that down and opened up the hole a little bit, you know, it, it works flawlessly now. Uh, I did move this to from a 90 degree trigger to a 45 degree. And I sort of, um, th this was the first time that I've done that. Mm, I, I guess... Yeah, I don't really have any comments uh, on that. I'm I'm gonna continue to uh, you know use some in 45, use some in 90, just to see you know which one uh, resonates more with me. Uh, and then at some point, I will turn all of my weapons into you know whatever I decide on. So right now, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what exactly uh, I like. All right, moving on to the trigger here. This is a CMC trigger. Um, this is a drop-in single stage. It has a three and a half pound break. It's very crisp, uh, very nice reset. Uh, it, this actually, uh, this, this trigger, so they have two um, single stage flat face triggers. One is branded as an AR-15, AR-10 trigger. And then they have another one that is branded uh, more specifically for uh, PCCs, nine millimeters. The, the reality is, is that these triggers are exactly the same. So it is just, as long as the hammer is stamped past a certain date, and damn, I can't really remember exactly what the date was. I think it's like October 2019. So if you open this up and if you look at the hammer, there's a date stamp on there. And as long as the hammer is stamped past a certain date, um, then the triggers are exactly the same. Um, again, just different marketing and, and different branding. So uh, know that because sometimes the AR-15 uh, versions of this are cheaper. Um, you know, you can find deals on them uh, and, and they'll work just fine. You can call CMC uh, to confirm exactly what that date is, but I'm pretty sure if it's anything past 2020, um, you will be fine. So I really like this trigger. I, I, it, it performs very well. Uh, it is, like I said, very, very crisp. Uh, it, it is pretty, it is much, much better, I think, than like, as an example, the uh, CMMG zeroed single stage trigger. I have that on the Banshee and it feels quite mushy or, or slushy almost would be the way that I would describe it. Maybe, maybe mushy. Uh, is a good descriptor. Uh, it, the, the, so the one issue that I will say that I have had with this gun, and I'm not sure if it's th like the trigger or the buffer or the mass uh, in total, but for some reason, when I run this trigger in combination with a hydraulic buffer, the, tr the trigger fails to reset properly, and I have to sort of nudge it or push it forward in order to get it to uh, properly reset. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. I have tried, you know, the, the, the standard length buffer with the hydraulic system in it. I tried putting an extended 8.5 inch just right carbine uh, buffer in with the, or sorry, uh, buffer tube with the buffer and some buffer weights that had the exact same effect um, on the trigger, uh, making it not reset properly. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of digging into that to, to understand, but um, with the, the, the dead blow buffer, 
uh, and the regular length um, buffer tube and the regular spring, uh, trigger works just fine and uh, it's actually quite nice. Okay, so moving up top here, uh, I just threw a, a Sig Romeo 5 on here. Mm, I, I mean, honestly, I just wanted, uh, I, I had it laying around and uh, I initially had the Holosun 507C on here, but I took it off and I put it on my 300 Blackout uh, and then I had this lying around. So I just uh, uh, tossed it on here. This was originally sitting on a, a 22 rifle that I had. Um, so, but I did put it here on the, the Unity mount, uh, the, the Unity Fast Micro uh, riser. This specifically puts the, uh, the, the eye view up to, I think it's like 2.26 inches. And so this really helps to increase your ability to, uh, you know, get target on site with, with a heads up, um, it's kind of shooting posture. So, you know, you, you keep your head basically straight up all, you know, both eyes open and you have great field of view as to what's going on. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it, it makes target acquisition uh, very fast and, and very easy. And, you know, again, I was building this initially as a, a home defense build. So, uh, you know, I, I wanted something that, uh, well, you know, I could easily acquire targets in a, in a short distance manner. And this, this works out pretty well. Um, I mean, not really much to say about the Romeo. It seems like it's a really good red dot for the price. I think it was like a hundred bucks on sale and uh, the batteries last forever. I never turn it off. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it works. It, it does exactly what it needs to do. Um, I think at some point I might uh, take a look at the primary arms GLX one uh, X, the new ones that are coming out. Apparently the, uh, the, the field of view, uh, on those is pretty amazing the eye relief so i'm gonna i'm gonna try that and uh, see how it is but for now this works just fine charging handle here is a uh, radian raptor sd um, optimized for uh, suppression so uh, i knew i was going to suppress the gun and so i uh, went for the radian raptor i also like the ambidextrous uh, nature of the charging handle and i like uh, the sort of extra grip that you get. It's a, it's, it's a bigger charging handle uh, than what was on there. Every, everything, you know, works as expected. I'm not sure that I really notice uh, any reduction in gas blowback. Uh, I, I, it, it's, it's pretty minimal, I guess. All right, moving to the back. I did mention that uh, this is just a, a regular length uh, buffer tube. I have the Make an Armory Dead Flow buffer in here. So, uh, you know, one thing I would highly recommend is to make sure that your buffer is not solid. Make sure that the buffer actually has some weights in it um, that are able to slide around. So the way that you'll know is when you take your buffer and if you shake it and if you hear something moving around in your buffer, well, it's a dead blow buffer. Um, I, I, I did a separate video talking about like the problems with the AR9 platform, so I won't get too much into it on this one. but the the dead blow buffer does um, it, it improves the reliability of cycling and it also prevents or tries to mitigate what's called bolt bounce uh, bolt bounce is when the bolt slams forward and it, it chambers around but then because of the the physics and the mass of it slamming forward it bounces back slightly and so if you are in a rapid fire situation, what could happen is that the bolt slides back slightly, exposing the round, it strikes the round, and then it basically blows out of the side, um, causing you know, out of battery discharge or out of battery kabooms, out of battery detonation. There's uh, plenty of videos on YouTube. If you watch my previous video, I, I show some clips of that as well not something that you want. Uh, so always make sure that you have a dead blow buffer or you know something like um, uh, a hydraulic buffer. There's also now like radio delayed buffers by Maxim Defense. And uh, you know, there, like, there's things sort of like the, the silent capture springs that have been adapted uh, for the nine millimeter platform. So basically anything 
other than a solid buffer is what you want. All right, and finally, moving on, I decided to go with the uh, SBA4 uh, brace. I had the SBA3 on here, but to be honest, I really just didn't like the way that, that it looks. Um, I like the way the SBA4 uh, looks a lot better. I, I will probably get an SBA5 at some point just to try it out uh, when they kind of become, <clears throat> excuse me, more widely available. They don't really seem to be that widely available right now. Uh, and to be honest, these are, Kind of hard uh, to, to come by as well. Um, so anyway, I, I picked one up on, um, uh, you know, used uh, online, which was pretty cool. I will also say as a, as a tip that uh, there are some, I guess they're bootleg SBA 4s uh, and SBA 3s that apparently perform even better than these do. Uh, and there's a guy on Reddit that's selling them for like 25 bucks each. So um, I was going to pick up a couple of those and uh, to check them out just to have. I haven't done so yet, but just a tip in case uh, you know you were looking to get one and and you know you, you couldn't find one of these. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that is the build from front to back, and uh, I hope that uh, I hope that this has been you know educational for you. Um, you know, I hope I uh, properly articulated the, the reasoning the, behind the different uh, parts that I chose and, and kind of why I, I did what I did. I'm pretty happy with it. And um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And, you know, if, if you like this kind of content, if you like this video, feel free to, you know, share it with other people and, and spread the word. Thank you very much.